your alternative talk radio contact, the planet, KGRARadio.com. With infinite complacency, people went to and fro of the earth about their little affairs, serene in the assurance of their dominion over this small, thinning fragment of solar driftwood, which by chance or design, man has inherited out of the dark mystery of time and space. Yeah, and then I was using Storyblocks as this new video editor, and I took like an hour, and I put together this little promo thing, and it was kind of cool, and uh, just to call for more Bigfoot stories, and I got so ticked off, mostly at myself, because I know better than this, but I got done with it, and I export it, and I open it, and because I'm only on the basically the straight video level for story blocks they had put a massive story blocks watermark over the whole thing i'm like god damn it no. <laughs> i know better than this and then i you know of course it goes well upgrade your video and i already knew how much that was going to be it was going to be the 65 a month that we talked about and i'm like oh, i'm just not ready for that but i was like shannon you know better they dangle carrots and i should have checked that you know I spent an hour <laughs> editing this amazing little promo video that I kind of liked. I was like, this is going to drag in some Bigfoot stories. Boom, watermark in your face. <laughs> I was like, well, I'm not, I'm not going to put that out in the public. I'm not doing it. No. <laughs> I'm going to go to the back. Yeah. I'm like, once I... <laughs> yeah, just let me give a jack out. Shed one tear <laughs> for that sweet little video that no one will ever see until I upgrade story blocks. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Oh well, live and learn. You know, those are the. It, oh, I know. The, the and days it's funny, of like lives. so. How many times we do know better, but you just get into that moment. Yeah, you know what I mean, where things are just happening and it seems really good, and then. Oh, I was in the flow, man. Yeah. Oh, it, it has this like moving intro, and it was like have a Bigfoot story, and it it comes in dramatically, and the, the forest is moving in the background. It was kind of sexy. I was kind of happy with myself. Oh, <laughs> dreams dashed so quickly. Oh, well, um. <laughs> Let me uh, let me do a proper little intro here for you. At least the best I can I can do with my limited vocabulary. Sometimes <laughs> it is Monday. Oh, yeah, it's so Monday right now, Gad. Uh, so uh, Jason Hewlett is on with me, and he joined. Actually, he and Peter Wren joined me for uh, episode two three nine, and that was titled "We Want to Believe." So you guys joined me to talk about not only your your documentary series, We Want to Believe, that's the title of it. We talked about Demon Jar on that uh, particular episode, but we also talked about some of you guys' investigations with your group, the Vancouver Paranormal Society. But this time around, we are discussing the next iteration of this investigation location you guys, you guys got to go in person and take a look at. And it is, again, you know, we want to believe, but this time it is titled The Barn. And you sent me an advanced copy of the trailer. I got to take a look at that. Looks real creepy. It's a beautiful barn. I'm assuming this is a barn that somebody converted into a home, right? Is that yeah. the situation there? And where, so where is this place? Like, let's get the basics out of the way before we, we delve into what was going on there. Well, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a barn and it's an old barn, you know, from like the late 1800s, uh, early 1900s that D who was kind of our client did restore as like a one part her home and then another part like she she rents it out as like a venue you know if you get married you can have your reception there because it's a beautiful spot it is like the least scariest place I've ever visited um on like you know a, you know a creek kind of thing lots of grass she totally remodeled it it's very you know beautiful looking as you even see in the trailer like inside looks great not intimidating at all um, and it's located in sort of the interior of British Columbia because we're kind of with COVID, we're not traveling very far if we don't have to. Yeah. Um, so it's, a, it's near a community called Vernon, which is about just like just under 
an hour and a half from where I live here in Kamloops, which is like, you know, three hours northeast of Vancouver. Yeah, and a great, great little spot. And, and a, but a very unusual kind of story to it that when Peter first told me about it, and then when we got there, it, it almost it kind of morphed in a way that um, took all of us, I guess, a bit by surprise. It's the best way to kind of like segue out of that into what came next kind of thing. So this lady, D, she restored it. How much remodeling then did she have to do? Was it, it was completely just a, a gutted barn, basically, when she found it and turned it into a home in this kind of entertaining space? Yeah, it had like, a, I guess, a kitchen area that was she completely redid and then she refurbished everything to, to kind of give it that country vibe, but, you know, make it kind of more modern, you know, updated the plumbing and, 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 and all that kind of stuff. And then the, the second level at one point was used, it housed chickens, I guess, you know, for eggs and such. And so she completely gutted all of that uh, and remodeled it. And she spent a lot of time and a lot of money on, on this place um, and created this beautiful little oasis kind of getaway that she is actually trying to sell, but she's having difficulty selling it partly because of COVID. And then she's wondering if it's because of what's actually going on at this barn, um, which is an unusual phenomenon. Um, but you guys, you kind of touched on, I think uh, on one of your episodes or one of your insider ch chats and having to do with water, like water in the paranormal. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah. That, that grabbed me in the trailer too, um, because I came across something where people were just having random water droplets falling on them and they had no, it, there was really no, logical explanation for it and then that was touched upon in this so what was that aspect of it with the water well d it kind of just started and that she would be she suddenly would have water droplets appearing on her body um and at first it was just sort of in the area like in the barn and in more of kind of like a back bedroom area but then it started to follow her like she would be at like her mom's and outside talking and then suddenly water droplets would appear you know just out of nowhere on her body um, and we even saw like water inside the barn, whether or not it was like of a supernatural beginnings or not, but there was, there was water there and it's located near the water. And she says, there's no way because of the way everything was built and remodeled that it could be like from dripping pipes up in the attic or in the floor. It's just kind of coming out of nowhere. And what was odd, the oddest part about it was that it, it had to do around food, like, you know, well, preparing food or eating food or after she ate food that this water droplets would appear. Now I, I find that peculiar <laughs> you know, i've never heard of that as a, as a, as a, as a cause uh, of anything but it seems to tie in into food or in relation to food as well in mm. some way mm -hmm. that's i wasn't expecting that that's oh, what in the world are we to make of that with food so food preparation and or consuming a meal yeah yeah it, it, around that whole process right and or even then afterwards and mm. i mean i try to think of logical ways people salivate you know um you eat maybe you get warm you know your body gets warm from eating so i do i get a big energy kick so maybe related to that like sweat or whatnot but i, I don't know it's it's really weird um uh, and you know and some on the team the, the skeptical ones are having a harder time taking it more seriously in relation to that mm -hmm. but d really believes something's going on and, and she's not really comfortable with it um, and it, it, this is sort of kind of going to be a two part episode, but during the investigation, we brought in, in a psychic named Jen and, and she picked up water as well. And, and her big touch on is that water acts as like a conduit for things, you know, to move from one way to the other. And I know first nations, their aboriginals discuss water as not only a cleansing, but as a way it, it becomes its own kind of portal for things. Yeah. Um, so you can take it on a number of different levels. Um, but it made for a really different investigation for us because uh, we the only one that had heard anything like that is Peter. He had had a case in Vancouver years ago that had to do with water, but it was more water appearing in a building for no for no reason that they mm. could find. Right? You mean Not like little puddles and, and things like that, just on the yeah, floor? And, yeah, on the floor, or appearing on ceilings, you know, on, on and on beams and things like that 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 couldn't be explained because he's he's. A, years of construction experience and he could find no logical explanation it would just appear um but to have it around a person like this is was is all very much focused on d we decided because when we did our investigation and when d wasn't there you know i don't want to spoil things but it just it, we, it wasn't that active a place so it sounds mm. more related to her than to the property so with d then is 
Is Dee the woman that in the trailer, she's got longer blonde hair and she said that when she drove by the property, I think she said either she got tingles or her skin crawled. Was that Dee? Yeah, that, that's Dee. She just felt when she went by it that she had to to live there. Mm. You know what I mean? Or had to buy that place. Like it was very compelled to do that. Almost like she saw it and it called to her kind of thing. But um, now she's in the process of selling that. And is that in direct relation to what she's been going through as far as the activity? It, that was a bit unclear, um, but it sounds like now the, the, the simple task of trying to sell it isn't working, partly because of what's going on there, that she's just having no luck with the place, you know, in terms of having it on the market, it's set on the market for months, nothing's happening to, with it. Um, and again, we've got a, you know, a pandemic going on, and but this real estate is still moving, but she's having a harder time with this. And she's wondering if it is related to, you know, like luck, bad luck going mm-hmm. on because of what's happening with this location. Um, it's interesting stuff. Well, she finds some, you know, quote unquote, freaks like us that love (laughs) this kind of activity, then that may be a selling point for the house instead of a deterrent, right? Well, you'd think, yeah, dark tourism, right? (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) It's my haunted barn. (laughs) And and until people see this, they won't know. But until when you lay eyes on this place, it's like Jason was saying, it's gorgeous. I mean, it's, it's light and you know there was blue sky when you guys were filming and the barn is quintessential red massive building it looks very uh large is that all just one structure or does she have different buildings going on there there's just the one okay the the one structure maybe one little outbuilding you know like a shed sort of thing but the bulk of it is just this large very traditional you know when you think of the because you're right it's the red barn you know you'd always you see it in like you know the very americana pictures right this big barn where there's the loft up top that you can open with the hay bale you know it's a stereotypical looking barn. And when, when Jen was going through it, she picked up on a couple different things um, that could be two possible entities there. But her big thing that came up, and it'll be more in the second episode, is, is the whole nature of, of not just water, but spiritual attachment and how that can be not a particularly good thing um, to have a ghost attached to you and kind of following you, right? Uh, that's kind of beca- became a theme that came up uh, while we were doing the investigation. So the psychic gen does feel like it's it's more attached to D than it is to the property mm-hmm. itself. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And whether whether or not it it started in the building itself and then kind of moved to D or or just kind of was passing through and was drawn to D, it's hard to say. But when you hear D talk about this place calling to her, it makes you wonder if it pulled her there for a particular reason, right? It, this gets into a whole other area of of paranormal high strangeness that's. Uh, does make it exciting to look at it from an investigator standpoint. Yeah, you kind of wonder if, you know, if there was something always following D, but for some reason this location would make that much, that situation much easier for that entity to then, you know, contact her or uh, manifest in some way. Uh, I mean, that's all conjecture, of course, but I mean, and if a spirit can even discern that kind of thing maybe they can maybe they can't but what so of course one of the main questions that i should get to is what kinds of activity is going on in this place well and that that becomes kind of the funny thing shannon (laughs) When, when we did the tour like it you know you go into a place that's haunted you can feel it right like you feel something very unsettling or just off about it there was none of that in this place nothing unsettling about it. In fact, it felt very welcoming. Mm-hmm. You know, you wanted to be there. And D kind of is was doing the whole walkthrough kind of thing, which makes up the bulk of our first episode. She's sort of describing everything that happens, and we're all just kind of like, I don't feel, you know what I mean? Like, anything. We did the, tour. the only place where it, which seemed a bit off was when we did go up into the upper level, which would have been the old, like, kind of the attic slash hay, you know, section up above. And that, it, it's upstairs, it was darker. I know with Marcus, he's one of our cameramen, He his camera just went dark for some particular reason. Um, it was still filming, but he just wasn't capturing anything. It went, everything just went black for a bit. Um, and even when Jen walked through there, she did not want to go upstairs. Mm. Uh, she felt like, did not like the feeling of upstairs, and that's where it just felt like there was the, more of this male presence that um, wasn't so keen on us being there. Um, whereas downstairs, she picked up on a presence, a female presence, there was much more energetic and inviting uh, and welcoming and uh, rushing about. And that almost sounded to us like D. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Like almost like she was picking up on D's vibe because was, D was probably one of the most friendliest people we'd ever met. High energy, very easy to get along with, you know, very welcoming person. So it was these two contrasting feelings that we got. 
while we were on the location. And then we did, of course, a couple of EVP sessions as well. And it was, I don't want to say too much, but it was very unactive. But at that point, D left, which we usually do when we do an investigation. is like the homeowner, we asked them to leave at one point. Right. And uh, which kind of just fo- came across sort of the very D focused thing. When D wasn't there, we didn't really pick up much of anything. But when D was there, there was sort of more, or even on the property is when we kind of got more of a sense of something, especially in the upstairs portion of the barn, the second level of the barn. Hmm. And that is interesting because the psychic herself said, uh, nope, I'm not going up there because there's like a, a dark male presence, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, definitely. She felt she did not. It took a bit to get her to go up the stairs, <laughs> actually, I remember, because, you know, Peter's with her on the tour. I'm filming it, and, and you know, and so is Brandon. And uh, yeah, she just was not comfortable walking up those stairs and going up to the second level. It can be really difficult, especially with an older building and records and things like that. But, and I, of course, any area that we need to not go for spoilage purposes, then, you know, just, just tell me so I totally understand. But, you know, is there any kind of a tie-in with a male and a female, which wouldn't be that far-fetched because people marry and then they buy a house. Uh, but is there any kind of a tie-in with something like that and, and this property? Well, D, now I'm not sure if D is so much single, um, but there was no, there was no one else around except her. But there could have been in the past, yeah, you know, a male and female presence there. There, there were other owners, um, to the best of our research. So that could very possibly have been a couple. Um, we don't, we're not aware of anyone dying there, mm-hmm. uh, which isn't to say that you know, like we've there have been cases in the past with paranormal investigations that just because you know someone didn't die there doesn't mean they're not going to come back there in death, right? You know what I mean? Or their energy won't return there to a familiar place that maybe they they felt an ownership to. So that's a possibility. I mean, this is one as investigators, because of what happened sort of our, during our first day, we would like to go back another time uh, and investigate with and keep D on site the whole time, actually make her a part of that investigation just to see how that, if that causes anything to happen. I would really like the, the investigator me and filmmaker me really wants to see these water droplets appear and what they look like and what is the, what is the actual catalyst for it. I think that would be really cool. Uh, that's why it was such a an interesting tie-in when I was kind of uh, posting about water droplets, and then you're like, "Oh, that's so weird," because we were just we, we covered that in our latest investigation. I'm like, "What?" Um, <laughs> so, so she does live alone. Where, now where is her Where's her bedroom? Is that downstairs or is that upstairs in the more creepy area? It's downstairs. Yeah, okay. it's downstairs. So if you kind of come in, it'd be towards you know where the front of the front of a barn would be where the big the big doors are Mm -hmm. that you'd roll out on the bottom that the horses would you know and livestock would come through um hers is sort of more right where those doors would be in fact the windows and the doors or one of the windows is the door in her bedroom the other window on the other door would be sort of more of like a a common area room that they use as a place where people actually do get married you know what i mean in the actual spot um so there's nothing like the, the place itself is is a very used for very positive purposes, which also makes it kind of interesting because you know we associate hauntings more with you know or activity more around places where bad things have happened. Um, like we had in our first one with the demon jar, it was a place where lots of bad things happen, and there's quite a bit of negative energy. This place is almost at least for the time that Dee's been there and the work that she's done is the complete opposite of that. So what would it draw something there? Except maybe you're right, Shannon. Maybe it's you know a couple that used to live there and went back due to a connection to the location it, it, it raises a lot of questions well obviously the man was upstairs doing some animal sacrifice or something i mean that <laughs> right. that's not quite as positive as we were hoping for no just maybe kidding. if we like clean away like all the fresh paint there's yeah images underneath or right or something like that yeah right. yeah completely you're like uh what's actually under that carpet there d um, <laughs> i mean but what what has d been experiencing herself has she seen anything does she hear things does she feel anything just the water huh just this water that's what makes it so bizarre there's there seems to be no other actual activity there except this and that that uneasy feeling upstairs Hmm. i mean and then it could bring in the question maybe it is all in d's head do you know what i mean like maybe who knows like there's been lots of times where the it's more the person wanting there to be something or having something going on that they can't explain, so they make it into something else. But Jen picked up on some stuff that was very interesting and had a good long conversation with Dee about it that we filmed, um, which touches on 
there being another presence and it definitely being attached to Jen, not to Jen, Jen saying it's being attached to D. Um, so a lot of it, whatever it is, seems definitely attracted to and locked on to D, especially if it's following her to other locations. And there is a, a danger to that, even if the spirit isn't like a malicious spirit, but you don't want something following you around all the time, right? you know, in terms of your energy and then what kind of effects that can have on your life. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Just, just cats. I mean, the rules are, um, like you said in the beginning, you don't want anything to follow you home, period. So no, not oh, at all. Okay. So that's, that uh, is almost more interesting than that. It's just the water. I guess I didn't realize that the water side of this was actually the focus, which is really very cool. I mean, can you expand upon that as far as, how often does it happen? What kind of amounts of, you know, volume of water are we talking about? Just literally droplets, or is there ever more than that? It, it sounds like droplets, but not like one or two, but a lot. Mm. Um, and it seems to happen multiple times a week to her. So it's a very consistent thing as well. But there's no, like, you know, torrent of water <laughs> falling out of the ceiling. It's like a dark there. cloud above her, and she's like, oh, yeah, damn, exactly. raining again in the kitchen. Oh, <laughs> crap. <yeah. laughs> or anything like that. <laughs> right. So, you know, Hollywood could really grasp onto yeah. and, and make interesting. But it, it, it's enough, obviously, to cause concern, right? Like, it, for her, this is not a, a comfortable thing. Um, she doesn't feel threatened by it, but it's definitely, like, you know, no one wants to suddenly just start, you know, perspiring crazily for no particular reason right. so yeah i i would be curious to know like when you were doing your your discussions on on water what did you find shannon or what what did people kind of share with you yeah it was all over the place in that it was sometimes it was someone in their car or it was in their house or they were outside which i think especially and even they were kind of hinting the outdoor stuff can be a lot more difficult to pin down i mean mm -hmm. this might sound kind of gross but just like i was laughing about lyle i bring up feces well here i'll bring up some urine for everybody um i don't know <laughs> if you've ever sat under a hummingbird feeder but those little guys take little pee pees too and i mean it's not out of the realm of possibility that a hummingbird that you didn't see came by and pissed on you i'm just saying like it's a, a it's a silly act, like way to to say well that explains it but i'm just saying it's not impossible so i think that the indoor stuff can be a little bit more interesting especially in a car if you have things rolled up, unless, uh, you know, you, they call it gleeking everyone. I'm sure everyone is very <laughs> familiar with that. Unless you gleeked yeah. on yourself. It's such a stupid word, funny word. Um, but, <laughs> you know, when you're in a house, then you can go, well, maybe it was a pipe or this and that. But that can be really very easy to take out of the discussion as far as that being the culprit, right? So, yeah, I, I found mostly that it was the same thing, just a couple of drops or one droplet. It wasn't a significant amount of water or anything like that. Uh, but it, the second I put it out there, I got several people going, oh yeah, that has happened to me. And in some in some cases, it seems like, oh yeah, I wasn't even really, I hadn't thought about that in a long time. But yeah, the, I, it was memorable enough that when it came up, then they, they were like, oh yeah, that did happen to me. Uh, I've never personally had anything like that but once i came across it i find it really creepy and odd and interesting well the, the things you're describing sounds pretty much like what's going on with d right like like she was telling us that the when she was at her mom's they're just sitting outside in one minute fine the next minute it's like bloosh, all this water but not like you know dropping on her but just like almost like appearing mm. on her for no reason i mean you know you, you mentioned the hummingbird feeder thing that have been a good question to ask what were you <laughs> sitting underneath you know, but it just, yeah, it didn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense to her. And I mean, when we looked around, even she's having it happen mainly in this bedroom area, there's no even water damage to the ceiling. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like right. where that, which is a sign that there's a, there's a leak somewhere. And even when we went upstairs, the pipes, I think we were supposed to be the level above that. So it'd have to have gone through two levels of floor, you know, ceiling to get to her. And there was no puddles of water on that, in that attic space at all. So I don't know what that could be in that sense. I just know her reaction to it and the fact that she was not comfortable with being targeted by water or whatever it was that was doing this, right? right? And we're assuming it's water, of course, but I mean, I guess it's no different than a purported Bigfoot hair or something that unless you really test it, how do you even know what it is? But 
you know, it very well could be ectoplasm from Slimer. Who knows? You know, Ooh, um, we just we don't know. <laughs> it looks probably less sticky. Uh, you know, when Vankman got covered in it, uh, it was pretty <laughs> apparent that was pretty sticky stuff. So uh, who knows? Um, yeah, but I agree. <laughs> as far as that area goes, though. And I think most all areas have some kind of history, or if you dig deep enough, there's some kind of paranormal or odd activity. But was there anything that stood out in in that particular area of the world that was interesting to you guys? Well, I think the fact that it was on on like a, a, wa- a waterway, right? Mm-hmm. A creek slash river. And I know with Aboriginal beliefs, like that's where things happen. It, it ties into water. Everything moves with the water. Like, like, like we said, it's a conduit. And I was talking with Chris Bowes, who's an Aboriginal artist and storyteller. And, you know, he said that's sort of how spirits would, you know, they, they move about through waterways. The energy of the water uh, becomes a cleansing place as well. Um, so it wouldn't, and then that's also where, where, you know, Aboriginals would settle is, is on, you know, near water. So I'm, I'm sure one of the the bands probably was active in the area and who knows what. And, and with, with uh, Aboriginal, there's always spirits and stories associated with it. Right. Right. So it wouldn't surprise me that at some point something was there or, or if you be- to believe, you know, Aboriginal legend that there, that's a, that was a place of power. And, he, and even Jen says it's a conduit. So there, it would make sense if there's something spiritually going on that you know, the, they're close to water. It could relate in some way to that in some sense. Or it's like and the that's movie. How it's... Sorry, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say something stupid. Uh, you know, it's just like the movie Poltergeist, where they they come to find out very quickly after digging the pool that there was just you know a massive amount of bodies buried under there. So, kind of explained <laughs> the whole thing. But uh, no, I'm sorry that... to interrupt you. What were you going to say? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you know those were actual skeletons that that he used in that, and she didn't know it yeah. until after? Isn't that insane? That isn't it. I but love it, it. No wonder they look so convincing. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, no wonder they say the uh, the shoot was cursed. You know, I mean, no wonder, dude. You used actual skeletons, people. But there's okay. A, did you ever? It's a, it's a total aside, but the Shutter series, cursed films. No, they have it's a I documentary it. series, and they actually touch on poltergeists. It's quite really? interesting. Yeah, it's worth the five ninety nine a month just to watch that series. They did no about three kidding. or four of them. With well, the omen and the exorcist and right. yeah anyway well yeah, yeah i mean the the cute little blonde girl carolina of course she passed away uh and then yeah the, that was sad too. yeah and then the the girl that plays the older sister was killed by her boyfriend right in some domestic yeah. violence incident um, done. Yeah. um and then of course then yeah like you mentioned bodies and all this other stuff and yeah, yeah it makes you makes you wonder but what was i saying <laughs> i know sorry that's my fault i no, just okay. say Say the most random, ridiculous things, and then, oh, there goes the train off the rails again, Shannon. Good job. But it makes life more interesting. Why it, does one have does. to always have a conversation that goes one direction? <laughs> oh, and speaking of curses and movies and things, again, here we go with the train. Um, I listened to, oh, I'm the worst with names. Oh, my gosh, I can see her face. She was on Howard Stern two weeks ago, the girl from The Conjuring. That she played the young the yeah the youngest girl oh, okay yeah and she said that uh and she won't even speak the name of the actual witch i don't know the name of the actual witch maybe you do from you know the actual story of the conjuring uh mm-hmm. and she said that she had bruises appearing on her body during the entire filming like ran in very random places uh really? so and she was she was really t- and howard doesn't really play into that stuff he thinks all this stuff is a uh, all hogwash bullshit but uh, she was adamant. She's like, I'm not saying that witch's name because I am terrified of her. She's like, 100% just honest. I'm not mentioning her name. I'm very, very scared of her because she was screwing with me the entire time we were filming. I was like, oh, that's interesting. I had never heard about that. I hadn't either. They didn't. Yeah, they didn't even play that up for publicity. You know what I mean? Because they'll studios will do that. I know. They'll they want that because then it just draws more buzz, right? So right. for her to, I maybe. maybe she didn't even talk- yeah point. i think that might have been the situation because she was in school and all this and that and it was already hard enough because she was like this young star and then she has to go to a regular school and she's you know must have been uh, uh tough i mean yes first world problems everybody but you know <laughs> it can't be easy to basically be in a 
couple of hit movies and then you, you're trying to go to a regular school and people treat you like a jerk or something you know so anyway yeah so maybe she kept it quiet but she was uh i was surprised to hear that because i hadn't uh, heard that rumor at all but no no that's usually stuff that you get out that you hear yeah you get to, yeah it, well maybe on one of these investigations you guys will be lucky enough to be totally terrorized and get it on film and bruises show up and not that maybe you're hoping for that but it does make for wonderful film fodder it, well there's and it's funny because like when we started doing this i said i kind of wanted to be the ghost show that got nothing you know what I mean? <laughs> right show the, the reality of it yeah but it, it's interesting how much you you do get and even with the barn like we did get something right which i won't spoil because it that's it's then makes the ride more worthwhile for the yes no that's good every time we've gone out now and we've done an, another investigation after this one and then we're doing the the bigfoot episodes now we've got something every time even if it's just one thing, um, which is interesting too, to get kind of, you know, more hits than misses still. Cause I've done whole investigations at houses where you got Jack, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like nothing. And you had to really question the people who were the homeowners and, and did right. they want something or did they, you know, just looking for a few minutes of fame, et cetera. But you were touching on something like with, that I didn't even think about. Like if, if water is sort of a conduit or a travel path, maybe what Dia's experience is something more ectoplasmic if it's attaching to her, right? Like that's just a thought that just popped up in my head. Right. While we were talking. Like yeah. maybe that's what it is. That's just how it's for, cause you have heard there's been cases of ectoplasm. It is supposed to be more goopy, but right. maybe having seen it, she describes it as water, but maybe water, it's not like water, water, but you know, thicker water. Yeah. It just happens to be clear, you know? Um, yeah. So yeah. Her, her brain just goes to water, which most of us probably would do the same thing. So. Yeah. So that could be something. So thank you. Maybe there's something there that I need to add in. <laughs> Thoughts on ectoplasm and such stuff. See, I guess me being an asshat sometimes does work out. I don't know. <laughs> 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 You're going on random tangents about Slimer and ectoplasm. Um, well, yeah. Well, oh, yeah, I mean. Of, that's all we've got in, in this field anyways. Yeah. It's all just conjecture and theory, right? Like there's no tried and true answer to any of it. Well, so far. and that's really important to, to drive home to folks because, you know, we're used to watching shows like a Ghost Adventures or, you know, you could name a whole slew of other shows. And, you know, I'm not outright saying that they fake anything. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that, you know, you watch those and sometimes they can be very intense and it's active and the EVPs are popping off and, you know, Zach is writhing on the floor in pain or whatever might be going on. <laughs> And that is just not at all, uh, I mean, I mean, if you could even guess a percentage that it would actually happen like that, like 10, 5, I don't know, like it's got to be a really low number. Five. Like even to help hear Peter talk about it, like when he was on and talking about, you know, we're talking, making fun of demons and how frequently they pop up in ghost shows, but he's like maybe one or two cases yeah. in his entire career would really seem that way. Yeah, right, he's been in it, what was the number of, like, 30, 25 years, 30 years or something? 27 um, years of investigating. Yeah. And it's less than 5% would be these super ultra serious, intense cases where, you know, yeah, people are writhing. Yeah, even, there's not even really writhing on the floor, right? It's just, <laughs> right, even that's like, oh, <laughs> that's like point zero 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 one percent yeah. Yeah, you get more of an active place and the door slamming and a toy coming off. You know what I mean? Like, it's more like that the most common evidence quote-unquote evidence we pick up is evps really and you know here we go again with me i'll swing back to poltergeist i don't know why it keeps coming into my head but the perfect example is when the activity's already gone on they bring the team in and one of the investigators uh he's like oh yeah i brought my camera i'm i'm the one that captured the a toy moving across the floor over us how long was that uh, oh, like six hours several, he says yeah. <laughs> and then uh yeah over six hours he got this toy rolling across the floor and then craig t nelson's like oh really and he right he flings open yeah. carol ann and and her whatever brother um uh, whatever his the boy's name was sorry guys uh it flings open the door and everything's just popping off crazy <laughs> things are flying around i mean that's the really i think sometimes when you know someone from the outside you go Oh, yeah, I kind of do some ghost, quote unquote, hunting, which is kind of a silly word. But, you know, for lack of a better term, I'll investigate goats or what, what ghosts or Bigfoot or whatever I do. And they have this particular vision of what it's like. And, you know, maybe they, if they do believe you, of course, and they don't laugh. I think they think it's that door being flung open and things flying around and Ouija boards, 
you know, telling you they're going to kill you and all this stuff. And that is absolutely not the truth at all. Not a, never, no, never, ever, ever. <laughs> right. I experienced anything remotely like that. Yeah. And I know Peter has had more stuff, but even then, like, you know, it's nothing like that. There's never, I don't even think that's possible. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like, we just you know, haven't opened the right door to hell yet, Jason. I mean, you know, we're working I guess on not, it. Right? Yeah. Gotta work harder at that. Yeah. We need <laughs> more <hell>. like <laughs> blood and sacrificial tables and some dark things drawn on the floor in a basement. Yeah. It's always a basement. Uh, always a basement. All, always drawn you need on a the floor. Y- yes. <laughs> so, or both. Both is even better. Both. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, uh, I, I just don't think, and I think you're, you know, we're kind of making fun, but you're right. Popular culture gives people the wrong impression yeah. of, of what this stuff is like. Like, you know, you, you go, you go out, you Bigfoot hunting and you did a whole series on UFOs, right? How much stuff did you see that convinced you? Yeah. I, you know, the big ship came down, the beam of light lifted some people up, they disappeared. You know what I mean? Like, right. that doesn't happen. No. Uh, I mean, the chance of actually going out and looking for a specific thing and it actually finding you or you finding it is almost almost nil uh it, it's usually more like a lightning strike situation or finding gold or something mm-hmm. like that you know um it doesn't mean that the hunt isn't fun as hell though and it's still oh, worth it the hunt is almost i think to me more fun than actually getting an answer i almost don't want answers completely because then it's like oh right that's well, what i say real. a lot i, I totally <laughs> right? agree like, and then, then you're done i guess that's it i guess we found out the answer let's just go home mm-hmm. now and lead boring lives again kind of thing you know that would be so sad wouldn't it we don't want it the mystery be. to go away no no it's and i'm kind of glad because i found this stuff in my experience it's almost like it there's an intelligence of its own and it kind of almost seems to know we're looking for it um so it provides all the clues and then it, then when you get there there's this weird bit of misdirection that goes on um and you're almost led to look in the wrong place <laughs> and it starts happening somewhere else. You know what I mean? Like right. it's, it's definitely, yeah, we found that even with doing our Bigfoot stuff, you know, which I don't want to talk about too much, but there's, yeah, you just go looking for something where it's supposed to be. And then it, you go there and while you're there, if something happens elsewhere, that could be it. And it, it just, yeah, there always seems to be, and you hear that even reading books on Skinwalker Ranch, you know, and all the stuff I've read on ghosts and, and on yeah. hauntings, it, it's not dumb. It, and it doesn't seem to be so random there seems to be a bit of intelligence to it, which it may be here with the barn. That was it. Like it's D D left. So, you know, the, we just didn't see what we went looking for. Well, yeah. And, and go back it there. is, it is that whole trickster element though. And that's, that's so yeah. cool that you brought up uh, Skinwalker Ranch because uh, you know, that definitely seems to be, and I think even Ryan Skinner, who I've talked to a lot about Skinwalker Ranch, that definitely seems to be a play out there. Uh, you know, you're over here and over there, there's, there's something that if you would have gotten in on, on camera or seen it with your own eyes, everything would be changed, you know? Mm-hmm. So, uh, the intelligence there is, is fascinating. But when you really think about it, you're like, well, it is a little frightening. And then that plays into the fact that I don't, if that is what's going on and they can manipulate things like that, whoever they, whatever the they is, uh, then we're mm-hmm. we're definitely not going to be getting very many answers. But hey, like we said, that's okay. Just the hunt yeah. alone is it can be worth it. Um, swing it back to the trailer. And again, I don't know if we can touch on this. We might want to save it for the folks to watch. But at some point, you you cut in a blurb there about some cops showing up. Is that something that that you <laughs> want to talk about, or should we save that for folks? <laughs> what did you do, Jason? <laughs> we didn't do anything. What did you do <laughs> now? <laughs> it, it kind of becomes our bit of a cliffhanger at the end of the first episode but all i can say is i wish when people are driving by and they think they see something that they would take a second look oh crap because apparently because we're wandering around with cameras a motorist saw that and just assumed we were walking around with guns hmm. and so they called the police i didn't know which they, has never happened. they make gun Guns shaped like cameras. Not not the cameras we were using. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. <gasps> um, wow. People are it was, special. It was, it was special. And it was something that um, <laughs> we still chuckle about now. And, and even Peter's like, never in my 27 years <laughs> as an investigator. And I'm like, nor in my like, you know, doing it seriously for three. 
has that ever happened? Oh, I've never had my. cops called on me when I was in my wild party days, even. <laughs> you know, like. I mean, it's a badge, really. I'm sure it's yeah. kind of a high five. Like, okay, well, we got that out of the way. We got the cops called on us. Sweet. You know, while the cops are there, you should be like, so do you ever get called at this house for anything weird? Do you ever see anything strange or something? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that I was, was unfortunately inside. Like, there was one of the teams, and I was in, and they were out. The other team was out when they showed up, and we didn't even know. Oh. Myself, Brandon, we're doing a little EVP session and talking away, and we're walking by, and Brandon looks out the window, and he's like, there's three cop cars outside. <laughs> I'm like, bullshit. Went and looked and like, oh, no, yeah, there's three cop cars outside. <laughs> oh, golly, geez. People are Because, so you know, they were armed terrorists, so they sent out, you know, the full on, you know, not just one cop, but three cars. I mean, so yeah, ghost hunters are terrifying. That's for sure. Uh, we are. You were definitely scary. terrorists. <laughs> um, oh, I know the other audio clip that was cut in. Uh, I'm assuming this was probably Jen saying this she felt like she was intruding is that her talking about the upstairs area of the barn Mm -hmm. yeah that she definitely felt like she was intruding on something and that was like again when we went upstairs like that even during the first two we did two we did two kind of tours we did one with d to hear the story right and jen was hanging out outside and one of our uh cameramen was interviewing her and we went up and that was the only time that it felt like yeah, just that little bit unwelcoming. Usually you, you, you get that feeling going downstairs, you know, into buildings where the basement always feels a little bit off. But this was up and it did feel a bit off upstairs for whatever was going on up there. Like there was the chickens and I guess the, the, someone was doing some experiments on the chickens. So, you know, there's this little bit of weird story to it. Uh, and then definitely when Jen went up there, she felt that she was intruding and did, that, that this male presence didn't want us hanging around upstairs in, in the top part of the barn. Which would tie into the kind of the general, maybe if, if you want to just try to put pieces together, maybe whatever is going on, there is this male presence, I, I don't know, causing this water. And it was just kind of passing through and like the barn and then it drew D there for whatever reason. I, I don't know. Like This is where I'm kind of just making stuff up right. as it goes along, I'm trying to build a narrative. Because I'm a storyteller too, right? I want to know why and what's going on and make logical sense out of it. And, and nothing really that's gone on there so far has made any logical sense to me or any of us really. I mean, is it a situation where you go there, you know, and then you said the second you left, basically everything kind of left with her. So then are you guys kind of staying there going, well, maybe we should implement some tactics to get things going. You know, is that where your mind goes or you're just kind of going, okay, well, obviously it's attached to D. So that's, you know, that's the narrative. That's the story. And you don't try, try to poke and prod at all. We didn't really too any poking and prodding like we did all our usual investigative stuff to try to bring things out right like we used our spirit box and we you know we did our evp sessions and then we filmed and we're in different parts of the location uh and we did get the one bit the thing we did get was kind of more in the area where the, the activity was focused but that's why we want to go back and i think good to go back and have d there and have her be more of a participant i think would really i think i hope would bring forth something um, and even on the show in general, we're going to start, you know, we, we used a psychic. That's the first time we did that. We'd like to use her again because she's pretty much the only one that Peter gives any credit to. We'd like to try more of a Gans field experiment, some screening, you know, just do more stuff to kind of bring, you know, so it's not just the same old asking questions with recorders and a spirit box. There are other tools that can be used as a paranormal investigator to try to get something and just sort of see what happens. So this, you said this one is a two-parter, right? So are you thinking mm -hmm. then, like you've, you've mentioned a couple times you'd like to go back there. Is that something that Dee is open to? And then you would film a couple more episodes, uh, maybe more focused around her? Yeah, I think we, we would definitely, something we would do. We, we wouldn't want to do it right away. Because we just don't want to, you know, we've done this one. We've got a few more shows that were, one more sort of series of shows in the can and we're filming something. So maybe after that, it'd be neat to go back and go back like a year later. Or, or sort of in the new year and see what we could get if there's, if things are still going on. Because it's just one of those things. A, it would be nice just to hang out there again because it's a nice spot. Yeah. Uh, he's a nice lady. But I just, uh, you know, it was one of those times where when I left a bit unsatisfied this time because there was no, like when we did the demon jar, when we wrapped up the investigation, we had things. We knew we got stuff. And the stuff that we got kind of corroborated the stories we'd heard about the place and what people were experiencing. But this was a case of going in and just getting kind of like, Ah, it was weird. It was just baffling. More of a mystery to me, to us in the end, that I think warrants a going back 
or my co-host, Sean, who's kind of a resident skeptic, doesn't think so because he doesn't think anything's going on there. <laughs> it's in Dee's head. But I think we would like, definitely Peter and I and um, Sarah, who's one of our other investigators, would like to go and take another look at it with Dee there to see if that does cause anything to happen. Well, yeah, and that's a good tease for people to go back and, and watch the episodes of the first round of Demon Jar because, as you, you mentioned, you did get stuff, and one of that quote-unquote stuff was legitimate growling uh, as an EVP, which was uh, pretty mm. damn creepy. It was, and even in the very end, we ended the whole the final episode of the Demon Jar with an EVP. We didn't even get here at the time, and it was like it was the phrase "kill them," which we didn't. None of us at the time heard that, but when we were listening to the stuff after, it was like holy shit, yeah. <laughs> like, something that was not happy with us being around, right? Like, sorry, Maybe bro, it was the demon. we are leaving. In fact, so it was good timing. We are going. Yeah. You don't have to kill anybody. We're going. Yeah, we're out. <laughs> Goodness me. We won't be going back. <laughs> so let everybody know uh, where they can find the demon jar, you know, the hub for all of that stuff. And then, of course, when part one for We Want to Believe the Barn will be out. Well, yeah, we can be found. Uh, the show is at Joe Blow Horror Videos. And we're all now also on VeryParanormal.com. We're on Facebook. We want to believe the series. Uh, it comes up. There's a Facebook page and then a group as well. Um, and of course, our other show, From the Basement, we, we post the episodes that we came from the basement.com as well. Uh, and then the barn, part one of the barn, which we've nicknamed Bloody Hay and Scythes, because that's what I expected when Peter was saying we're going to a haunted barn. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> what else would you think well, of? They, you, well, that was the first image that popped into my head. It wasn't this totally. wonderful spot to go and hang out. <laughs> You're like, what is this? What are these sunshine and sunflowers and butterflies flying around? What is this? Oh, and it was, it's funny. It's an aside channel. When, we when we were driving to the barn, it was gloomy and rainy and all that. By the time we got there, the sky, those clouds had burned off. It was bright and sunny and the birds were chirping. And it was just like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> You're like, is this a good sign or a bad sign? <laughs> Yeah, right? maybe good for getting out alive, bad for getting anything on yeah. film. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, well, this won't look as sexy and creepy on film. Come on back, Cloud. I know. Well, because I always look at like you know like Seth stuff, and it has a nice mood to it, right? Yeah. I, I can't get mood right now, and I was like, yes, we're gonna get clouds and maybe some drizzle. I'm like, nope. Sorry, guys. You're probably like, <laughs> you know? do you know how much color grading I'm gonna have to do on this now? <laughs> <laughs> to make it look even a ditch moody, that's a lot, life. <laughs> no, I appreciate you guys keep it real. You know, I really do appreciate that. That's what's great about so that's it. That's what we're trying. Yeah. That's the point of the show is to keep it real. Um, yeah. yeah, and the barn will be out uh, Friday, September 4th at Joe Blow Brown. Usually around uh, 12 Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, somewhere in that range. First so, thing in the morning. Four. Gotta love it. Yep. But that's cool. So Friday, September 4th, uh, 9 a.m. PST. Keep an eye out for that, guys. Now, did I did I cut you off though for uh, plugging any other places where people can find you guys, or was that did you get through all of that stuff? I think I got through all of it actually. Yeah, thank you. It was uh, yeah, it was, it was good. And thanks for having me, like having me on again, Shannon, to talk about this and for wanting to do this again and again as we do these shows. It's we really appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, well, so. next we have Bigfoot to talk about. So we do, and you're I'm really involved excited. in that. Yes, I'm very excited about that. I mean, just short of being able to actually get out into the woods, anytime I can talk about the big hairy guy, I'm excited about it. So thank you. Thanks for having me apart, too. Yeah, I know. Very much appreciate it. Anytime, Shannon. All right, man. Well, have a good day out there, and uh, I'm sure I'll, I'll be talking to you soon. Sounds good, Shannon. Well, I'm so-and-so. I was given this name by my parents. I've been to such and such a college. I've done these things in my profession. I produce a little farm. Says, forget it. That's not true. That's some story. That's all gone. That's all past. I want to see the real you you are now. But well, nobody knows who that is. is because we don't uh, know ourselves except through listening to our echoes and consulting our memories. But then there's a real you, and that again leads us back to this question uh, Who are you? That is the real. We shall see how they play with this exam by the cohorts to get you to come out of your shell and find out who you really are.
divided on us. They will say, no, we don't believe literally in reincarnation. That after your funeral, you know, you will suddenly become somebody different, living somewhere else. They will say, reincarnation means this, that if you sitting here now are really convinced that you're the same person who walked in at the door half an hour ago, you're being reincarnated. If you are liberated, you will understand that you're not. The past doesn't exist. The future doesn't exist. There is only the present. That's the only real you that there is. The Zen master Dogen put it in this way. He said, Spring does not become the summer. First there is summer, and then there is spring. Straight, 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 straight. 